the final memory in the Joy of Creation is the attic. And honestly, this is probably the most difficult challenge in the game. But how does this entire area work behind the scenes? How did the developer pull off this terrifying final challenge? Why don't we take a look, shall we? So as a quick refresher, in the attic, there is a television in front of you, and you need to watch the different rooms around the entire house. Like a traditional Finest of Freddy's challenge, you must shut the doors behind you so that animatronics do not come in and kill you. Now the goal for this is a bit different because you're not trying to run out the clock like a traditional challenge in Finest of Freddy's. Lasting a long time to 6 a.m. does not bring you freedom. It only brings you death because creation, this amalgamation of the ignited animatronics is hunting you down. And so the longer you last, the closer creation gets through the entire house. So creation starts off in the basement and to the right of your monitor is a lever that you pull that flashes the camera. And when you do this, creation gets stunned. It will prevent them from moving forward and it will reset their phase in the room. Normally, Creation has to break through a couple different objects in the room to get to the next room, but by flashing them, you can delay this process. But you have a choice to make because you can only flash the camera every so often and it takes time to reset. Now, the true goal is not to delay Creation. No, that's sort of a looming threat. The true goal is to flash Golden Freddy 12 times. And with each flash, a fire begins to spread throughout the house. And you can use this to sort of gauge your progress to see how close you are to being done. Of course, alongside this, you need to watch your screen to make sure that the endos in the other attic rooms do not come in. You use the lever to the left of the monitor to view the second set of cameras. You must then shut the doors behind you so that they don't come in, and you need to pull the levers on each side to shut the corresponding door to prevent the endo from coming in. You also need to listen very carefully on which side the running endo could pop in on. Of course, you need to close that door so they bonk their head and then wander back to where they came from. And the last threat, besides creation reaching the final room, is Golden Freddy, who can appear behind you as a giant head. You basically need to quickly look away, otherwise you will die. And all of that together is the fifth memories challenge. So, now that you have a refresher on the flow of events in this challenge, let's show you what's going on behind the scenes, because there's a lot. So everything that you can see through the cameras exists on this map. If we were to exit the attic, you'll see all these different rooms scattered throughout this map. From the basement, to the living room, to the office, to the baby's room. And even the two sub-attic rooms that you can't normally see by turning around. The cutscene with the phone is even on this map too. If you go out of bounds, you'll see the phone sitting in this giant blank floor space. And if we zoom in, we can see the phone and the correct angle that we normally see during the cutscene. But let's talk about some of the basics. So the screen in front of you actually has two separate screens it can show. It has all the rooms in the house and has the attic rooms that have the endos. Now what you can't see is that when you swap this camera, the screen you are looking at appears way below you underground. And it's interesting because this screen is normally invisible to the main in-game camera. Even if we were to move the camera down there and look at it, we won't see anything. It's actually hidden, so we have to enable some things in order to see it. But as you can see, either screen can appear down here, way below the map. Going back up top, there's a window behind us in the attic that we can normally face when we turn around. And as you'll see, if we move the camera there, there isn't really a world beyond that window. It's literally just a rainy background. It's a small gap that has some trees, there's some rain and some wind, and there's actually a wall right there, and that wall is the basement just beyond the attic. Normally you can't see this, but it is right there. Now, right outside the walls of the attic space that we are occupying as the player is a lot of things. So beneath the floor of the attic, we can find the creation laying down in a T-pose, just chilling beneath the trap door. So on this map, there are actually two creations. There's the one that's sort of wandering through the house, and then there's this one that only appears when creation makes it into the attic space. Until then, this monster is just waiting down here, asserting its dominance until it is called upon into the attic. Now the actual creation can be spotted in the different rooms, always frozen in place. But Golden Freddy actually behaves a bit differently. So Golden Freddy can appear in the rooms, and that's when you flash to them with a camera, but when they aren't on the map, they actually appear in random locations outside the map. And honestly, I'm not entirely sure what these different locations mean. I just assumed that there would be one spot that Golden Freddy would go to when not in use, but there are actually multiple, and I don't know why. Now we'll come back to Golden Freddy here in a sec, but I want to talk about those endos now. So what's interesting is by the model of that T-pose and creation, actually in front of it, the endo that's going to attack you will load in ahead of time. 
Now, if you can see below the floor, you can see what endoskeleton was going to attack you, very similar to if you were to look at the cameras and you can see the static, you know you're about to get attacked by the endoskeleton. So at this point, you would normally shut the door to prevent them from attacking you, but it's kind of weird to think that they're just waiting beneath the floorboards, just waiting to attack you. And that's exactly what they do. When the jump scare actually happens, the endoskeleton literally morphs through the floor to their jump scare position. And as soon as they get there, the jump scare then plays. Now normally, this would cause the player to turn around and get hit by the jump scare. But watching this uninterrupted is kind of surreal. It looks really funny. Oh, the secrets of game dev. Now, of course, in the adjacent attic rooms where the endos load and unload, they do just that. We have these two corners that represent the attic, and these endos just spawn in there when they're present, and they disappear when they are not. But what's kind of interesting is that the running endo, the one that can run into the room like Foxy from Final Fantasy Freddy's 1, that endo is constantly running just behind the right door. So if we were to turn around and look to the left, just outside of that door is this endo running a marathon in place. They are severely hauling some major butt. And when you die to the running endo, basically they get warped to the door that they come out of and the jump scare plays. But we are not done with out of bounds objects yet because Golden Freddy can kind of get weird. So something that can happen during this challenge is that Golden Freddy can appear behind you. And when that happens, Golden Freddy is this giant massive head. There is no body that you can see. It is just a floating head. However, beneath the floor, we can find Golden Freddy's body. And what's interesting is that the body is still technically attached to this head, yet the head is two or three times the size of the head normally, maybe even more. But beneath this floor, the giant head is dragging around the body of Golden Freddy that's just out of sight. And Golden Freddy's body can actually clip through the creation's body. They sort of just pile up down there. And all these characters together, appearing and disappearing and warping around the map, is what makes this challenge as creepy as it is. And for one final thing, as we get closer and closer to the end of the challenge, obviously fire starts to consume the building. Now what's really interesting is that if we slow the game down and take a look at the fire, we can kind of see how this fire is created. It starts off as a little flicker and then it evolves almost into a plume of sorts as the fire expands. And the way they do fire in this fan game is the same way they actually do the fire in Help Wanted, the official Finest of Freddy's game. For example, during the corn maze where Foxy chases you, the fire does this thing where it always rotates and faces the camera. And in the Joy of Creation, the fire that spawns that burns this building is exactly the same thing. It is designed to always face the camera, and if we move the camera, then the fire moves with it. And with that final note, that wraps up the attic in the Joy of Creation. Now, hold on just a second. I'm going to be doing the cutscenes and the other memories here in another video shortly. So if you want to see that as soon as it comes out, subscribe right now so you do not miss it. Of course, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see all of you in the next video. Cheers!